How do you get the best seats on the newest Epcot coaster? Where can you get free drinks in multiple locations? Find out all the best Epcot secrets and tips today on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog and I'm coming at you with a mega video today jam-packed with 50 secrets and tips for your upcoming trip to Epcot. Now, I've got to admit, there's no way I can memorize 50 secrets and tips and I don't want to take notes and I don't expect you to do that either. After you finish today's video, go ahead and drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com 2023 Epcot Secrets. That way we can send you this entire list straight to your inbox for free. Then you can refer back to it at any time while you're planning or while you're inside the park. All right, we're going to dive right into the tips. Tip number one, find a secret message in Norway. Outside the Royal Summer House in Epcot's Norway Pavilion is a small courtyard with a really cool secret. In this area, you can find six rune stones with carved words and images written in the 11th century AD Viking tradition, which is already cool in and of itself. Now, all six runes work together to recreate two different scenes based on the attraction that used to be where Frozen Ever After is now, Maelstrom. But it gets better. One of these rune stones has a special inscription on it. If you translate it, it says, you are not the first to pass this way, nor will you be the last. Those who seek the spirit of Norway face peril and adventure, but more often find beauty and charm. Classic Epcot fans, does this quote sound awfully familiar to you? This is a direct quote from the old Maelstrom ride, making it an awesome tribute to the defunct attraction. Now, there's a brand new attraction available in Epcot that you may wind up liking even more than the rides. The DuckTales Showcase Adventure is an interactive scavenger hunt made for both the young and the young at heart to play around the park. During this game, you'll be sent to specific areas throughout the World Showcase and asked to hunt down clues. Answer the questions on the Play Disney app to officially embark on an adventure with the cast of DuckTales. These interactive features add another level of fun to your Epcot day, and best of all, the game is totally free to play. So if you got the time during your next trip, be sure to check it out. Now, Magic Kingdom isn't the only park with tunnels and activities just below the surface. Turns out Epcot has its own tunnel system as well. This one is just about 700 feet long and is located partially under Spaceship Earth. It's used for deliveries to the stores and construction in the front area of the park. You won't be allowed to visit if you're not a cast member, but hey, it's still a neat fact to spring on your family and friends while you're waiting in line for one of the rides. You may already know that Disney's new Magic Band Plus technology can interact with the nighttime spectaculars in the park, but did you also know that your Magic Band Plus can interact with certain attractions? So far, we've seen our bands do things like flash with the colors of the French flag while in line for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and vibrate or pulse with the blue light at the exit of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And best part, this is still a neat secret that only those with a Magic Band Plus are going to be able to experience. All right, hold off on purchasing those mini ears just yet, because if you haven't visited the Mitsukoshi department store in the Japan Pavilion, you may be missing out on some of the best Disney merchandise yet. The Mitsukoshi department store has multiple rooms inside a gigantic shop. We've been able to find some of the most unique items like unicorn mermaids, inflatable vases, what? Incense, collectible matchbox kitties, robes, fun candy, teacups, and so much more. Seriously, they basically sell everything here and it's all awesome. This is also your one-stop shop for other Japanese pop culture brands, including, but not limited to, Studio Ghibli, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, and Kingdom Hearts. But don't leave Mitsukoshi just yet. When you get to the very back of the store, you can slip into the Bijutsu Khan Gallery to explore a small exhibition of Japan's cute kawaii culture. Now, we here at DFB love all things convenience, and this next tip is definitely a convenient one. Much like you can mobile order food from the My Disney Experience app, you can also get your souvenirs at select Epcot gift shops without having to stand in a physical line to pay. And it's all thanks to the merchandise mobile checkout feature, which, what do you know, is also located on the My Disney Experience app. Merchandise mobile checkout is available for the Creations Shop, Epcot's flagship store, and Treasures of Xandar, which is the Cosmic Rewind gift shop. To use mobile checkout, tap the plus symbol at the bottom of your screen and you should see an option there to shop in store. Select it, then choose which store you want to shop in. You'll use your phone to scan the barcodes of anything you want to purchase and once you're finished shopping, you can hit checkout. After you've paid, you'll see a QR code pop up on your screen. You can show that to one of the cast members at the front of the shop and they're going to scan the code to verify that you've paid for your purchases. Then you'll be good to go. No waiting in line necessary. 
Now here's how to meet your favorite characters in a completely unexpected location. Epcot is a very popular place for Disney characters of all kinds. You can meet Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph inside Imageworks. You can say hi to Mickey at the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival. You might see Anna and Elsa at Royal Summer House. Or you could see dozens of other characters popping up all around the world showcase just to say hello. But there are three different places you could potentially find character meet and greets that are a bit more on the rare side. These include the International Gateway, aka the back entrance of the park between the France and UK pavilions, the American Adventure off to the left close to that huge gate as you face the pavilion, and the World Show Place when available. The reason these meet and greet locations are more rare than others is because they're used for characters in rehearsal, since they typically have less hectic crowd levels. If you want to figure out which characters could potentially be hanging out in those locations during your visit, or if you want to learn more about any of the other characters at the more popular locations too, make sure to check the attractions and shows tip board on your My Disney Experience app for the exact time frames to meet your favorite Disney pals. Now, Character Palooza, which is what we call these random character sightings, is sometimes not scripted or scheduled, so you may just come across it when you get lucky and be able to meet completely random characters that do not belong in Epcot like Mr. Smee and Max. All right, are you ready to learn about the double sphere secret? Did you know Spaceship Earth isn't actually one big sphere? It's two big spheres. Much like a nesting doll, Spaceship Earth has one smaller sphere nesting inside the bigger outer sphere, which many refer to as the giant golf ball of the park. The inner core is what holds Spaceship Earth's ride system, while the outer shell keeps it safe. Now this is super fun and very few people are gonna get the chance to experience this, but we wanna tell you about it just in case. There might be a way for you to get two different Space 220 pre-show experiences in a single reservation. But first, let's talk a little bit about the restaurant's Stellavator. Before you enter the Space 220 dining room, aka the Centauri Space Station, you'll board the Space Elevator. This elevator will then proceed to transport you 220 miles above Earth, hence the name Space 220. On the elevator, you can look down through the viewport in the floor to see Epcot shrinking away. But that's not the last you'll see of this elevator. This elevator also transports you back down to Earth once your meal is complete. It's a very considerate space elevator. This part of the restaurant is a really fun effect that makes the overall dining experience more immersive. And what makes it doubly cool is that depending on the time of day you're eating, you'll either see this elevator taking off during the day for lunch hours or at night for dinner hours. But why not experience both? If you make an early enough dinner reservation, you might be in the restaurant long enough to catch daytime and nighttime views from the elevator and the space windows overlooking Earth. Ready to uncover the secrets of the newest Epcot attraction before it even opens? Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, is gonna be the newest walkthrough attraction coming to Epcot. This experience is meant to be a lush exploration trail, I like to call it my zen garden, that'll allow guests to play with magical living water and learn about the importance of the natural cycle of water. Now, you may have seen the concept art for Journey of Water when it was first released, but let's take an even closer look at the details you might have missed. Now, what we're about to divulge here is by no means a 100% guarantee of what we'll be able to find at the attraction when it officially opens for the public. It's called concept art for a reason. We just like to take these concepts and overanalyze them, like a Where's Waldo search and find book from back in the day. Analysis one, take a look at that rock work with what appears to be jumping water fountains on the top and some more unique and colorful effects on the bottom. We're wondering if these fountains will be similar to the ones that were used in the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train queue at Magic Kingdom, where you could wave your hand over the spouts to make the water dance in the music play. Analysis two, in the back of the attraction, it almost looks like there could be an awning similar to the one up front, offering guests a shady area to relax. It seems like the big draw in this particular area is gonna be that waterfall. Don't worry, Canada Pavilion, we still love your waterfall and all its Canadian glory. And analysis three, if we're able to walk behind the waterfall, do you think perhaps we'll be able to see a secret area inspired by the scene in Moana where she discovers the boats behind the waterfall? Okay, okay, that's more of a dream than what's actually being shown in the art, but if there is some merit behind our prediction, then bring on the epic music and cool lighting effects. There's so much more to pinpoint in the concept art, but again, we won't know everything for 100% certain until this attraction opens later this year. Now, how do you charge your phone if you don't have a power bank in Epcot? Well, after taking pictures of all the different pavilions and every which angle of Spaceship Earth, your phone might be running a little low on juice. It's important to remember to pack a power bank or use a charging case in your park bag if you want to charge up on the go. But if you forget your power bank and you only have your USB cord, you won't be entirely out of luck in Epcot. 
The booth seats in the Connections Eatery located in World Celebration have built-in USB ports and outlets so you can charge and have a quick lunch all in one. And if you forgot your USB cord too, there are a handful of tables that also have wireless charging capabilities. Welcome to the future, y'all. And we're back in Norway again to find another awesome Easter egg. This time, I'd like to turn your attention to the top of the Norway Pavilion rooftops. Notice that some of these are covered in grass. This is actually a popular roof style in Scandinavia. The sod roofs are heavy and provide insulation in the frigid winters, not to mention the watertight birch bark plus sod and grass combo also works as a natural noise barrier to help keep peace and quiet inside the house. While many older Norwegian sod roofs are left to grow wild, Epcot's grass roof keeps up with a routine manicure schedule. But instead of taking a lawnmower to the roof, that would be something, cast members in charge of landscaping this area have to trim the grass with scissors. So the next time you have to mow your lawn, just think, it could be worse. Now, if you've been watching DFB for any amount of time now, you already know about my love for Caramel Kusha in the Germany Pavilion, and we've got a special tip on how to get a discount here. This little shop practically beckons you across its threshold with those sweet smells of buttery caramel, but once you're inside, your willpower only gets weaker. And if you're an annual pass holder, then Caramel Kusha gets way sweeter. Since this caramel shop is technically labeled as a merchandise store, pass holders are able to get a 20% off discount on everything they buy here. This is a special trick you can use in a lot of candy counter stores. They are considered merchandise locations, so you can get a discount with your annual pass on their food. Okay, time to familiarize yourself with the parking updates at Epcot. They've been getting a major makeover, just like the inside of the park. New parking lot signs are currently being installed in the new space and earth lots, and that means you'll be able to park in sections inspired by favorite characters like Moana, Hey Hey, Crush, and Dory for the earth side, and Wally, Eve, Rocket, and Gamora for the space side. Hmm, not to look too much into these parking lot signs or anything, but isn't it interesting how Wally and Eve are the only characters out of the bunch who don't have some sort of attraction in Epcot? Very interesting indeed. But we already did a bunch of analysis already in this video, and we're not gonna do more. But still, we want Wally to come to the park, okay? Okay. Now, how do you request a seat for Epcot's only roller coaster? If you wanna have VIP treatment on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind free of charge, and there's a certain location where you wanna ride, like the very front, very back, or smack dab in the middle, which by the way, if you have a little bit of motion sickness, middle is the way to go, then right before you board, let a cast member know your preference. The cast member will pull you off into a different standby waiting area until the next coaster vehicle rolls in, then they'll lead you over to the seat you requested. Easy as that. This tip often works on coasters, but again, if things are really, really busy, don't bother the cast members with it. Just sit where they tell you to sit. Now, how do you see more than one light show in Epcot? Well, one of the best things to come out of Disney's 18-month-long 50th anniversary celebration was Spaceship Earth's Beacon of Magic. Each night, it comes to life in a brilliant light display. Not only do the external lights move and change throughout the night, but every 15 minutes, a full-on light show happens, too. But not just one show two shows. You've got the standard Epcot light show, which is beautiful in and of itself, but there'll also be a limited time festival inspired show that'll take turns with the standard one. So if you've only seen one light show, stick around and catch the other. They're both completely different experiences and well worth watching. The Beacons of Magic happens all throughout the night up until the park closes, so you don't have to worry about planning around a specific time frame to see either light performance. Ready to learn about the real brothers from the American Adventure? Epcot has some awesome shows, but if you're a big fan of audio animatronics, then you're gonna have to find some time during your Epcot day to check out the American Adventure in the American Adventure Pavilion. Seriously, there's something awesome and highly unsettling about watching Robo Ben Franklin walk upstairs. How? During the show, though, there's a heart-wrenching tale about two brothers who fight for opposing armies, like the Kelsey brothers in the Super Bowl. While the story takes place, you'll see pictures of these two brothers projected onto the stage's screen. But it turns out these two brothers are based on the likenesses of two Disney Imagineers. The first is field art director John Olson, and the second is Jeff Burke, who helped work on several Disney attractions in both the States and Disneyland Paris. 
So let's talk about guaranteeing your seat for fireworks. When you visit Epcot, you're going to want to prioritize two different shows. Unless you really are a fan of audio animatronics, then make it three and throw the American Adventure in there. The first show is going to be whatever's playing in the America Gardens outdoor theater while you're there. Epcot's festivals don't just rotate out food booths. They rotate out concert series, too. So depending on which festival you attend, that'll determine what concert or musical performance you get to see that night. Though the outdoor theater can seat up to a thousand plus guests per performance, those benches still fill up fast, especially for for the last concert series of the year, the Candlelight Processional, which takes place during Epcot's Festival of the Holidays. Not to mention, only a section of these seats are actually covered. This is an amphitheater. Part of it is actually out in the open. So if you happen to get a seat outside the theater's awning and it starts to rain, then you're gonna get soaked and that's no fun. No fun at all. The second show is the Nighttime Spectacular. Currently, Epcot's playing Harmonious on the World Showcase Lagoon, but Harmonious's last performance will be April 2nd. Then, Epcot Forever will take its place as an intermittent show, while Imagineers continue to work on the more permanent fireworks display that'll take over later in 2023. If you want to guarantee a good seat for the fireworks, a good view, and even a good meal along with either show, then you might want to check into Disney's dining packages listed on the Disney World website. Fireworks dining packages are a available for booking at both Rose and Crown Dining Room in the UK Pavilion and Spice Road Table in the Morocco Pavilion. With these dining packages, you can reserve your spot in the outdoor dining room at either location, where you'll be served a multi-course meal during the fireworks show. Dining packages are also available for festival performances. The dining packages are available at lunch and dinner, and each includes an appetizer, entree, and dessert, or one full buffet when applicable, as well as a non-alcoholic drink and a guaranteed seat per person to the festival concert that day. Several different Epcot restaurants participate in the festival dining packages, with your cheapest option being Regal Eagle Smokehouse at 30 $5 per person, and your most expensive option being Le Cellier Steakhouse at $95 per adult. If you want to guarantee yourself a seat, because remember, you got to wait in line for an hour for some of these shows, go ahead and grab a dining package. It's worth it. Now, how do you find the best seat on Soren? Personally, I enjoy Soren around the world no matter where I'm sitting, but there are definitely good seats on this ride as well as okay seats. Soren consists of three large rows of seating. When you're in flight, the three rows rise up to the screen and are sort of stacked on top of each other. Row number one ends up being the top row, gives the best view possible. Your view isn't going to be obstructed by dangling feet from the other guests, and you get a great view of the screen. Plus, you get the most thrill of the whoosh up at the beginning. Row number three is the bottom row and closest to the ground. Though it's not as thrilling as row one, it may be a better option for guests who aren't keen on extreme heights, but you're still gonna be up there. And much like Cosmic Rewind, feel free to ask a cast member to place you in concourse B as opposed to A or C. You may have to wait for the next flight, but here's why waiting a little longer might be worth it. The seats in Concourse B will place you toward the center of the screen instead of the sides. When you can view Soren straight on, it's a breathtaking experience, but if you're seated on one of the far sides, your view is going to warp big time. It's still pretty, but you're just going to have to be okay with flying over a really crooked looking Eiffel Tower. So our recommended seats are always going to be Concourse B first up, and then Row 1 if possible. And now it's time to talk about those lightning lanes. How do you snag the best ones first? Okay, how can I describe Genie Plus in one sentence? Disney Genie Plus is a premium planning service on the My Disney Experience app that allows guests to book lightning lanes to bypass the main queues of rides in exchange for much shorter queues. And you have to pay for it. How was that? When you're visiting Epcot, make sure to prioritize grabbing lightning lanes for rides like Test Track, Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Soarin' Around the World first. Epcot's other attractions shouldn't be as bad of a wait depending on what time of year you're visiting. And if you're wanting a lightning lane for Cosmic Rewind, you're going to have to pay for that one a la carte via an individual lightning lane purchase, at least right now. Individual lightning lanes will be available to purchase starting at 7 a.m. for Disney World hotel guests. You can purchase Disney Genie Plus even earlier than that starting at midnight the day of your visit, but much like the individual lightning lanes, you won't be able to make your first lightning lane selection until 7 a.m. Now, if Guardians of the Galaxy is still an individual lightning lane when you visit and you aren't a Disney World hotel guest, you're going to have to wait until the park opens to book that individual lightning lane. So your eyes are not playing tricks on you. The clock on the main building at the American Adventure isn't your average clock. For the most part, this features Roman numerals to mark the time, but instead of the traditional Roman numeral four marking the time for four o'clock, it's written as four eyes instead. 
In a park so focused on detail, why would Disney seemingly make such an obvious mistake? Turns out this isn't a mistake at all. Disney chose to write out the number four this way to make it easier to read from a distance since the clock is placed so high up on the building. An extra fun fact for you, that clock is actually higher up than you might think. Imagineers used forced perspective when designing the American Adventure buildings to make them look not taller, but shorter. Though these buildings are actually five stories tall, colonial buildings back in the day were not. So to preserve the authenticity of the pavilion, Disney did what Disney does best. It used magic to manipulate us. Only partially kidding. Now, are you ready to brave Mission Space? Mission Space is not a ride for those with easily upset tummies. This flight simulator to Mars could leave you feeling disoriented, especially if you choose the more intense orange mission over the less intense green mission. But if spinning and screen rides don't mess with you the way they mess with others, like me, then you can discover a lot of cool secrets in this place, especially inside the queue. Along the queue, you're gonna be able to spot things like a genuine lunar rover on loan from the Smithsonian, a command room where cast members sit behind behind a glass wall in a room with multiple control panels, and plaques commemorating outstanding firsts in space travel, like the first man in space, first man on the moon, and up to the fictitious first family in space, first deep space mission. Next on our list is trying unique coffees and smoothies. There are five different Joffrey's coffee kiosks in Epcot. The first one is right at the park entrance, the second is at World Discovery, right outside Cosmic Rewind, the third is at the Mouth of the World Showcase Promenade, the fourth is sandwiched between UK and Canada, and the fifth is over at the American Adventure Pavilion. But the coolest thing about each of these Joffrey's kiosks is that they're each liable to offer up something completely unique to their specific location. For example, you can find the Joffrey's awesome drink at the location near Cosmic Rewind, which is made with frozen lemon ice and a splash of Minute Maid Premium Lemonade and Desert Pear Syrup, topped with chewy green apple jelly stars. But you can also find festival-specific drinks at each of these booths too. For Festival of the Arts this year, you can find four different frost drinks with an icy lemon base. Amber Frost is made with blood orange flavors and is located in World Discovery. Magenta Frost is made with dragon fruit and is in the UK Canada Pavilion location. Jade Frost is made with green apple and can be found at the World Showcase Promenade. And Cerulean Frost is made with blue raspberry and is over at the American Adventure Pavilion. But definitely pay attention for each festival because each location is going to have a new drink. And now we've got a place you can escape the crowds. Even though Epcot's a park that doesn't get as overwhelming as Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios, it can still get way too people-y at any given time of the day. So if you need a quick break from all the crowds, I've got just the place. You can find private seating in the Japan Pavilion right outside the Katsura Grill Quick Service, and no, you don't have to eat at Katsura to use it. This little Japanese stroll garden is shaded, peaceful, and hidden away from the crowds. Plus, there's a koi pond, so make sure to say hello to the fish for us. And of course, we're gonna give you the tips on knowing which free sodas are the best. When you check out Club Cool over by Creation Shop, you're not gonna to have to pick and choose which international sodas you wanna sample. You're gonna be able to sample them all, absolutely free. But if you're looking for an official ranking of these eight sodas, just so you know what to expect of each, we've got you covered. On the bottom of our list is the oh-so-infamous Beverly from Italy for its notoriously bitter taste. But we're also not too keen on the smart sour plum from China that basically tastes like barbecue sauce. Or the royal watermelon from the Philippines, which tastes like straight-up liquidized sour warhead candies. Viva Raspberry from Moldova, Minute Maid Joy Apple Lychee from Korea, and Bon Bon Anglais from Madagascar are much better, with lots of fruity, refreshing notes, but our absolute favorites of the samples are the Country Club Meringue from the Dominican Republic, which tastes like a cream soda tropical fruit flavor combo, and the Cucumber Sprite from Russia, which gives you all the freshness of a cucumber and all the sweetness of a Sprite. Quite the dynamic duo. Of course, everyone's preferences are gonna be different, so bite the bullet and try them all. Now, what if you wanna taste test drinks somewhere other than Club Cool? Yep, you can get free drink samples somewhere else in Epcot too. The Tea Caddy in the UK Pavilion will sometimes have samples of their teas and flavored waters available for guests while they browse the store. And during the Flower and Garden Festival, if you complete the shop's Royal Tea Garden Tour, you're gonna to be rewarded with free Twinings tea bags. And since you're gonna be over there, and since we just told you about that great Zen garden in Japan, don't forget to go right behind the Twinings Tea Shop and head to the courtyard in the UK. A lot of people don't know it's there, so it's often very quiet and very relaxed. 
Now, the Germany Pavilion might not have a lot going on when it comes to rides, but they do serve up some mighty fine eats and drinks. One of the most overlooked locations of this pavilion is the Germany Hovel's Beer and Bread Zone. At this kiosk, you're gonna find a variety of German beverages, including beer, of course, shots of Jägermeister, if you wanna hate yourself, and even German wines. They've also got huge hand-twisted pretzels to help soak up the alcohol. But one of the most iconic beers available here is the Schafferhofer Hefweizen Grapefruit Beer. This is a good drink for those who are looking for something light and fruity and more refreshing than your average alcoholic beverage. It's also good for those attempting the drink around the world challenge since the ABV level is only 2.5%. And next, it's time to put your art skills to the test. Over at Il Bel Cristallo, the Venetian masks gift shop inside the Italy pavilion, you can create your very own Italian mask. After you've spent time decorating your mask just how you want it, they take about 15 to 20 minutes to dry, so you got plenty of time to like pick up a gelato over at the gelato stand while you wait. Resin masks start at $30 and paper mache go up to 50. And what's that rhythmic beat you hear off in the distance? It's probably coming from the Japan Pavilion. Daily Matsuritsa shows happen in front of the Japan Pavilion's five-story pagoda. These performances celebrate the art of traditional Japanese drumming through a practice known as taiko. The show happens every hour on the hour, starting at 11 a.m., with one extra performance right before they wrap for the day at 4.45. Kids and adults are going to love this one. I cannot tell you how many times I've walked up to see a show and also got to see tons of kids dancing around to the beat. It is very fun. Fun. Now, there is a show in Epcot that's been around since 2020 that more often than not, guests will skip during their visit, and that's Awesome Planet inside the Land Pavilion. Look, I understand it's not the most thrilling show out there, but it still provides audiences with a good message on protecting our ecosystems. Not to mention, the show is 10 minutes long in an air-conditioned theater, so at the very least, you get a nice break out of the heat. It's a good spot to go kind of relax and calm down and chill out before you go on the wildly exciting living with the land down below. Now, you know we're the Disney food blog, and we know about all the food, and this is some of our favorite in Epcot that a lot of people don't know about. Barbecue and salt and vinegar chips are so last season. The House of Good Fortune gift shop in the China Pavilion sells some rather unique potato chip flavors that you're not going to find on the shelves of your Walmart back home here in the States. Flavors include options like salty egg and shrimp, honey butter, cucumber, and spicy crayfish. And there's a good possibility you're going to find even more during your visit. So let us know the favorite ones that you've tried. And we're back with more Norway secrets. To find this little Easter egg, you're gonna have to head toward the waterfall in the back of the pavilion. It is time to track down the hidden sword. Back in Maelstrom days, it was fun to watch the boats drift up to the hole at the top of the waterfall since it looked like they were gonna fall out. When Frozen Ever After took its place, the hole was filled in, but another waterfall gem stuck around. Behind the waterfall is a sword that's been stuck into the rocks. It can be very tricky to see at first, but it's definitely there hiding out, waiting to be spotted. And of course, it's much easier to see if the waterfall isn't running. So if you happen to be in Norway on a day that the waterfall is not running, you should be able to find it real easy. Now let's head to Mexico and ask this question. Why just drink tequila when you could be a connoisseur? Over at La Cava del Tequila inside the Mexico Pavilion, you can learn about, as well as taste test, rare tequilas at the hand of a certified tequila ambassador through the La Cava experience. You will need to make reservations for this one ahead of time through the Disney World website since it's a very small class with limited space, but this experience can be a great and unique one for those who want to expand on their agave spirits knowledge. Just be prepared to pay a hefty price price for this one. It's $150 per person. But don't sweat it, you don't have to take the La Cava experience to enjoy the spirits of the Mexico Pavilion. La Cava serves margaritas and tequila outside their classes too. Just swing on by and grab a seat inside or order one to go. Now, there's this inside joke among Disney goers about how if you can't find a table to eat at after you order your food from one of the several festival booths in Epcot, you can always resort to eating on top of a trash can lid. But oh my gosh, please don't do that. There's always extra seating and table space somewhere in Epcot. You just need to know where to track it down. Like in the Morocco Pavilion, for example. If you go deeper into the pavilion, you're gonna find a seating area hiding out back there that so many guests don't know about. Take advantage of it. Morocco is also a great pavilion to escape the crowds for a bit since it doesn't have a whole lot to offer guests right now in terms of entertainment. But it's still a beautiful place to relax for a spell and it's pretty quiet back there. Now, maybe you don't just want to find a sword behind a waterfall, maybe you want to buy your own. Surprisingly enough, Epcot can make that happen at multiple gift shops. 
You know the Mitsukoshi department store in the Japan Pavilion we talked about? They've got a wall of sword replicas for you to choose from, ranging between $90 and $360 plus. For much cheaper swords, you can turn to the House of Good Fortune in the China Pavilion instead. The swords they sell here are wooden practice swords made strictly for training and usually cost around $20 plus. You'll also find a range of swords for sale at the UK Pavilion in their Crown and Crest gift shop. You might even be able to purchase the Sword of Excalibur inside of having to prove yourself worthy and extract it from the rock the hard way. And if you want to eat your alcohol instead of drinking it, we are back in Germany at Caramel Kusha. Don't judge us. In fact, you should be thanking us because we're about to introduce you to the Werther's Liqueur Caramel Flight. These squares come in a flight of four and are infused with four different types of alcohol. You've got mojito, rum, tequila, and limoncello. And by the way, these do change out. Once in a while, they change the different liqueurs included. These caramels will be around $7 for all four and truly give you the best of both worlds. Caramel goodness and booze all in one. And once you're ready for another snack, it's time to refill your popcorn bucket with something sweet. Tired of filling your refillable bucket with the same buttery, salty snack? Well, the Canada Pavilion is going to satisfy your sugary cravings. The Canada Popcorn Cart serves a maple popcorn, which reminds me of kettle corn, but with a more breakfast syrupy aftertaste. You can get the maple popcorn for the refill price of $2.25 with your bucket, which is the same price as refilling it with regular popcorn. Now, if you've ever had that impulsive feeling of wanting to walk around the living with the land greenhouse or jump into the sea base tank and swim alongside the dolphins, then we've got a way for you to do just that, going to the forbidden areas of Epcot without getting arrested. The Behind the Seeds tour takes you through the four greenhouses plus the fish farm inside the land pavilion in a one hour tour where you'll encounter insects and fish and so many plants. You'll also learn several plant growing techniques that you can apply to your own gardens when you get back home. And then there are the two Epcot Seas Adventures Tours. The first is Dive Quest, which lets you dive into Epcot's current free 5.7 million gallon saltwater aquarium, a place home to over 2,000 sea creatures, including, but not limited to, sea turtles, reef fish, stingrays, and sharks. Note, you do need a scuba certification before you can go on this tour, but all your diving equipment will be provided for you upon arrival. The second Second is Dolphins in Depth, a tour that features a 30 minute interaction with the dolphins and backstage views and research sessions with Disney's marine mammal specialists. You will need to book these tours ahead of time, either on the Disney website or through your My Disney Experience app. And for the record, these tours do not include admission into the park. You're still going to need to buy a park ticket on top of that backstage tour price. Now, hello to all you crepe aficionados out there. I've got two places for you to order crepes in Epcot. And though they might be located in the same place, they both offer rather unique options. La Creperie de Paris is a casual table service restaurant that serves made to order savory galettes and sweet crepes, like the poulet galette made with chicken, bechamel cheese sauce, and mushrooms, and the poire crepe made with pear, chocolate ganache, and whipped cream. It also has both an a la carte and prefix menu option to accommodate those who want to try a couple of different crepes versus those who just just want to try one and call it good after that. But like Creperie's to-go window, Crepes on Porter offers a couple of different crepe options that you're not going to find at its table service counterpart, like the cream of brie cheese galette and the red berries crepe. So it all depends on what you're after. You want to escape the heat for a bit and enjoy some fancy crepes in the AC, or do you want to grab a sweet savory crepe as you make your way towards your next Epcot adventure? The choice is yours and yours alone. Next, you're not always going to want to invest in Disney Genie Plus and its Lightning Lane service when you go to Epcot, but that doesn't mean you can't still find other ways to bypass those super long queues. Test Track and Soarin' Around the World both have those single rider options. Single riders fill in the open spaces left by odd-numbered parties. It's usually a much faster way to get through the queue, but you likely won't get to ride with your group, which may be a deal breaker for you. If it's not a deal breaker and you're ready to get away from those yahoos and you're eager to try and bypass that 60 plus minute wait you're seeing posted for these rides, then consider breaking up your party and giving the single rider queue a chance. That way you can spend more time riding together on the other rides instead. Our next secret tip is one of my absolute favorites. You can celebrate with the sea urchins. The urchins over at Sea Base sure know how to party. Okay, that was a weird sentence. Let me explain. The sea base cast members at the Seas in Epcot will sometimes put little trinkets in the urchin's tank that go along with the season. We've seen little Mickey-shaped hats for the 50th anniversary, spiderweb decor for Halloween, dreidels for Hanukkah. There have even been some cowboy hats in there. But what's super fun about these decorations is how the urchins interact with them. 
sea urchins naturally investigate new things in their environment, and if they deem it worthy, they'll pick up these new objects to use as camouflage. But even though they're doing it for a natural way to protect themselves, it looks like they're busy sporting off the cutest pair of Mickey ears we've ever laid eyes on. So I guess that makes it a win-win for us and the urchins. And one of the absolute best things you can do in Epcot is taste your way around all the different food booths at those festivals we've been talking about. But since there are so many options to choose from, how are you possibly going to narrow it down to just a handful? Well, that's why you're here with us. For each festival, we eat every single thing at every single booth, and we put out a brand new video on our YouTube channel talking about our favorite eats, drinks, and food booths within a couple of days of the festival's beginning. We also post several reviews on our DFB website you can check out whenever, wherever. We literally have a review with every single food picture and our thoughts on every single booth. But if you want an ultimate festival guide to look towards leading up to your big trip, you can always order one or a bundle of our festival guidebooks on the DFB store website. These guides come with over 150 pages of festival recommendations, money-saving tips, and maps that clearly lay out what booths you're going to find and where. And as an added bonus, you can type in the code YouTube and save money on your books before you check out. Once again, head to dfbstore.com and thank you for your support if you choose to purchase. Now there's a beautiful structure that rises above the China Pavilion and absolutely takes my breath away, no matter how many times I've seen it. And that's the Temple of Heaven. But the Temple of Heaven is more than just a photo op. Inside, you can see the 360 degree reflections of China show, projecting the sights and tourist destinations of both ancient and modern-ish day China. But to the left of the temple, you can explore the inside Shanghai Disney Resort exhibit in the Whispering Willows Gallery, a self-guided walkthrough that showcases the artwork and attractions unique to Shanghai Disneyland's park. But let's go back to the center of the Temple of Heaven, because the interior of this place isn't just gorgeous, it's also got a secret. The interior of the temple is acoustically perfect, meaning sound will echo, echo, echo really well. This is a nod to the actual Temple of Heaven in Beijing, which is famous for those impressive acoustics as well. Want to know how to get to a super popular ride in Epcot before everybody else? So Remy's Ratatouille Adventure opened in Epcot for Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration, and it was a hit from the get-go. Crowds for this trackless dark ride can still be pretty intense, but there is a way to get ahead of the masses before they get ahead of you. If you're staying at a hotel on the Skyliner route, or if you're staying at one of the Epcot area resorts, then you're going to be able to get into the park through the back entrance, the International Gateway. The International Gateway is sandwiched between the France Pavilion and the UK Pavilion, meaning you're going to be right there next to Remy, right when you step foot into Epcot. To get even further ahead of the Epcot crowds, make sure to take advantage of the early theme park entry benefit available for all Disney hotel guests. That's going to let you in the park 30 minutes before everybody else. Now this is a tip you're going to need to know if you're sticking around in Epcot's France for a while. In the back of the pavilion, you're going to find the Palais du Cinéma, which actually rotates out two different shows. The first show is the Beauty and the Beast sing-along, which takes you on a 15-minute journey through the classic animated tale as old as time, from LeFou's point of view. Choices were definitely made here. But LeFou doesn't get to have all the fun, because this sing-along shares screen time with the pavilion's classic film, Impressions de France, which is an 18-minute long film that just showcases France. What more of a selling point do you need? While Beauty and the Beast sing-along takes place during the day, the film switches over to Impressions de France by the evening and runs through the rest of the night. But no matter which show you decide to go to, you'll be able to check out the tale as old as time French storytelling on stage and screen exhibit while you wait. The gallery showcases a collection of costumes, music, and artwork while highlighting French literature in cinema, theater, ballet, and opera. Ooh, I've got three of the best ones coming up here next. First, return to the glowing pathways. So once upon a time, when the sun would set on an Epcot day, you used to be able to walk on lights in the ground across from the former future world. They were sparkly, they were colorful, and they always made me want to stay in the park just a little bit longer, even if my feet were killing me. But when all those Epcot renovations started happening a few years ago, all the lighted streets went away. But we learned last year that they're coming back. Disney Imagineer Zach Ridley shared on his Instagram that they're bringing back new illuminated paving designs in World Celebration. The new lighting fixtures will incorporate updated technology and controllability to deliver some fun new lighting capabilities. There are so many changes happening in Epcot right now, so if you want to learn about them all, don't forget to check out our 2023 Ultimate Guide to Epcot video after this. 
And wait a minute, didn't we already celebrate with a bunch of sea urchins and now we're celebrating on a tiny village? What can I say? Epcot loves to party and they especially love to promote their festivals in every way possible. Which leads us back to the Germany Pavilion. No, I'm not going back to the Carmel store, though I really want to. This time I'm going over to the miniature train village on the right side of the pavilion. For each new festival, this mini town likes to spruce things up with their own corresponding festival flags. It is fun to see this little village getting so festive, which is why we make sure to pay it a visit every single time we're there. Okay, with the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind last year, we received a whole lot of new fun secrets and Easter eggs to explore, both in the queue and on the ride. So let me show you just a few of our favorites for now so you can impress your friends and family when you're headed to Cosmic Rewind. During the Good Morning Xandar pre-show portion in the ride queue, this is located in the Xandar Gallery, Star-Lord reminisces on Epcot of the past. Listen carefully and you're going to hear Star-Lord, also known as Peter Quill, played by Chris Pratt, talk about how excited he is to visit classic Epcot from the 1980s, which means he name drops defunct attractions like Horizon, Kitchen Cabaret, and Universe of Energy. Poor Peter. Hasn't he lost enough? Also in the queue, you can catch a glimpse of Walt Disney himself with an original schematic for Progress City. He's still hard at work after all this time. And in the Galaxarium portion of the queue, you might catch a glimpse of an iconic and divisive Disney snack. As the supercomputer strives to learn more about Terran, which is Earth culture, it questions the fascination humans have with the turkey leg. And honestly, I question it daily too. Okay, one more, but this time let's go on the actual ride. At the start of the ride, right as the Guardians fly into space, you can hear a bit of what sounds like an electric guitar version of the old Universe of Energy theme song. Listen for when the Celestial says, what is that noise? And then you'll know. Now those are just a few of our favorite Easter eggs on that ride, but you can go ahead and check out our Cosmic Rewind video and see a lot more. Now Epcot's got some pretty cool swag in their gift shops, but if you want to sport a totally unique Epcot style during your next trip, make sure to check out our tees featured on dfbstore.com. We've got Figment inspired shirts, Spaceship Earth shirts, even ride vehicle shirts because they deserve some recognition too. They also come in a variety of different colors and sizes, including kid sizes. That way the whole family can have very, very fun matching outfits, which will look very good in all your different photo pass photos you take around the park. Once again, go to dfbstore.com to check them out. And what better way to wrap up a video than by making a trip to the bathroom? I don't know what I wanted to achieve with that question, but let's just leave it be. Some Epcot bathrooms are just gonna be way too busy, but others are gonna give you the privacy that you desperately need. The bathrooms we always hit up for maximum peace and seclusion are the hidden bathrooms over by the Imagination Pavilion. You're gonna find them on the very far right side of the building. The upstairs bathrooms in the Land Pavilion, not to be confused with the ones on the bottom floor next to Soren, those are way too crowded for our liking. And the bathrooms tucked into the American Adventure Pavilion, also on the right hand side, which also have the largest number of stalls of all the restrooms in the World Showcase. You could get lost in there. All right, we did it. 50 secrets and tips in the bag. Don't forget to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash 2023 Epcot secrets so we can send you a digital copy of this entire list for you to access whenever you want or need to. And keep checking back here for even more Epcot secrets and tips to come. Even though 50 sounds like a lot, there's a lot more of Epcot left to explore. We actually have some other Epcot secrets videos you might want to check out after this because those are all new secrets too. And there's so much more to come later this year. Needless to say, we are pumped. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.